This is Jackson the Kid Knight, and you're listening to the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast. Get ready for an hour, and who knows, of daily fantasy sports analysis from our panel of experts. Without further ado, let's meet the team from New York. He's the Don of all Beast Motors, the boat himself, Beast Mode Cow. From Cambridge, Minnesota, he's a father of four and has the most glorious beard in all of the DFS. It's Eric F. And last but not least, he's so St. Louis, ask his tattooist. He's the host of our show, the master of black Negro jiu-jitsu himself, Leroy Stephan. Welcome to the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast, and I'm here right now with Iman Zahabi, the brother of Faraz Zahabi. Iman, why don't you have a nickname? What's your, what's your nickname going to be? I don't know, man. We'll wait for them to give me one. Uh, <laughs> we got to get you one, man. You got We got to get you standing out here. But anyway, yeah. before we get into our analysis today for the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast, we're going to go ahead and get into Iman Zahabi's quick picks for the night. Of course, you know who I am. I am the master of Black Negro Jitsu. Lil Ross Stephan. Uh, I'm Zahabi. Let's get through this real quick. And if you have any expert analysis or expert input on it outside of a quick pick and a, and, and, and a decision and the uh, manner of uh, um, victory for UFC 213 here, go ahead and, and, and give me that too. But we'll just get through this real quick. Tiago Santos at 185 pounds versus Gerald Mearscart. Who's your pick? I like Tiago Santos. You like Tiago Santos, okay? And why is that? I don't know if he's going to get much of a finish in this one, but uh, you know, I think he's higher up in the rankings. You know, he's he's lost. You know, a recent not the last fight, but the fight before, right? Spicely, yeah. And one of your Spicely. guys. Spicely, one of my guys, yeah. <laughs> and I think he needs to make it up, man. I think he's doing nothing but training hard, and he's going to come back with a vengeance. And I think this is the one where he's going to showcase some uh, some new skills. All right, Rob Font versus Douglas Andrade at 135 pounds. I don't know if you know either of those guys. Pick. I seen uh, Rob Font beat that guy who fought, who fought him short notice recently, and uh, wow, he dismantled that guy, man. And I really, you know, I like his style, and I feel like uh, he's gonna have too much for Andrade. Okay, so you is know much? I, you Rob, know I don't know much is. about. Andrade. No, no, I know more of Rob Font. I know Rob Font is gonna be very good in this fight. But I don't know much about Andrade. Okay. Jordan Mean versus Bilal Muhammad. Has Jordan Mean ever trained up there? Try star around. He's Canadian, I know. He's Canadian. Yeah, we've seen him this a couple times. I don't know. I don't think he's ever come here for a training camp or anything like that. But uh, we've seen him around. This it's super nice guy. But see, like in this fight, like he just he just came back at retirement, right? And he had the last fight. Um, he was doing well. It looked like he had fun in there. But Muhammad Bilal Muhammad is is one determined guy. You know what I mean? And. Uh, I really feel like, you know, he's been training with the Rufus Sports, and I really feel like he might have the edge now in this fight. More well-rounded guy. You don't have any concerns uh, about his chin against uh, Mean because Mean is a hell of a striker uh, for as long as he doesn't drop off or something strange. Like, I don't know what happened. Yeah, like, he, I don't know. I don't know if he's got chin problems too or, or what it is, but uh, I don't know. I feel like Mohammed, you know, every, you know, like a guys who are chinny, once they realize they're a chitty, they make you know they make their their changes, and I feel like being at Rufus Sports is the place to really pre- learn striking to protect your chin. Okay. But I feel I feel like he can take him down. I think feel like he's gonna take Mean down. All you right, know? that's what's if up. Mean wins, it's great, great for Canadians. You know, I just for this fight, I I, I give a slight edge to Bilal. All right, Curtis Blades versus Daniel Omialancha at heavyweight. I, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know either of these guys. Okay, you don't know Curtis, Curtis Blaze absolutely dismantled somebody last time. I'm surprised you don't know him. Okay. Chad LaPriest versus Brian Camosi. This is a crazy fight because Chad's going up and wait. Okay. Is is he training? Where is he training at for this camp? He's not he used to train there, didn't he? Yeah, he used to train here. Uh, he had moved here and then uh, now he's moved back to uh to uh, Toronto. No, I think he lives in London, Ontario. It's like right outside Toronto. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this is going to be his first fight up at weight class. And, you know, for him to make 55, it, it wasn't easy. It really wasn't easy. So, like, and you I'm think hoping... that took a lot out of his performance? Yeah, yeah. And I'm hoping that now that he's at 170, it's going to it's just going to help him to do, be able to do more of what he did in the gym. 
You know what I mean? Like have that same pace and all that stuff. I feel like that wake up was kind of hurting him. And we saw something similar with um, Robert Whitaker. Like Robert Whitaker used to fight at 170 uh, when he was training at a TriStar. But then he went up to 185 and then boom, it just launched his career, you know? So that's what I'm hoping for with Laprise. You know, I'm hoping this, this change in weight class is really going to help him be even better of a striker. I never knew Robert Whitaker trained at TriStar. We'll get to that a little later. Travis yeah. Brown at heavyweight versus Alexi Olenek. I, I don't know much about Olenek. I haven't seen a lot of his fights, but he I mean, won I his, uh, he won a fight by um, Ezekiel Choke. Do you remember that guy? Oh yeah, that was him. Yeah, that was him. Oh, that was him. That's sick. <laughs> That's amazing. Good for him, man. That was crazy. I couldn't believe that happened in the UFC. But I don't know what's going on with Brown, man. I don't know. He's, you think he's chinny now, or what's going on with him? <sighs> he's got the Ronda Rousey sickness, man. Uh, they're both in Bizarro Edmund Tarverdian land, and so. I don't know. I don't just if it's you know if it's a I don't think it's a skill thing with Travis Brown. It might be mental, man. You know, it might be a lot of things going on in his life. You know, and then it's you know if you can't be in the in the octagon at a hundred percent mental focus, you know, you, you sometimes you go on a losing skid. You know, and uh, I'm not sure about him being there a hundred percent. Depends on his social life. I think it's more outside of training. You know, for him. Yeah, it seems to be the whole Tarverdian camp, man. That is it. The skeleton of Travis Brown is all that remains. Anthony Pettis versus Jim Miller. I'm picking Jim Miller because he's I got like the, Jim Miller. Exactly the wrestling edge. So you think his wrestling is gonna be enough to 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 to, uh, to thwart Anthony Pettis? You know, um, Anthony Pettis is Anthony Pettis is amazing, amazing striker, amazing, amazing striker. But he's got this Achilles heel to wrestlers. Like I, I couldn't believe he lost to Clay Guida. You know what I mean? Like to me, Anthony Pettis, man, he's got an Achilles heel to guys who can just shoot in his legs because mm -hmm. he. So much better striker than most guys. Like I put him in the top level, top end, top tier strikers in UFC. Period. Not only but in his weight class or any weight class. You know? We both know what Jim Miller is coming here to do, and that's get this to the mat and keep it to the mat. Yeah. And he has the pace to do everything Clay Guida did, and better jujitsu. So I like Jim Miller. Wondering if you did yeah. too. Fabricio Verdum versus Alistar Overeem at heavyweight. What's your pick? Verdum, 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 man. Why is that? I love Verdum. <laughs> I think he's great. I think he's really, really great. I feel like, um, you know, when you wa I watched Over Overeem run from uh, Stipe, uh -huh. I was damn, man, he's really worried about his chin. And Gee. Verdum isn't worried about his chin as much. And Verdum is confident. He's got great wrestling, great grappling, knockout power. I think, like, uh, you know, that fight with Stipe when he got knocked out was kind of, like, more on him than it was on Stipe. Like, I'm not yes, thinking... Yes, he was like, out striking Stipe Maocic. Big time. Yeah, and I, I, he's so worried about getting knocked out. He was just running. Around. It was bizarre, man. He should be. I think Alistar Overeem is the biggest shame at MMA because even post Uberim steroids, there's no way with his well-rounded skill set he should have not been a champion by now. I don't get it. Yeah, I think he's great too. I think he's really, really great. And I think Stipe is number one. But if there's somebody who's number two, like right behind Stipe or maybe equal to Stipe, it's Verdun. Right, I got Verdun too. Co-main event, Robert Whitaker, who I did not know trained at TriStar. At yeah, 180, super at 185 pounds versus your Romero. Now, yeah, I need you to put your bias aside here. What do you really think, I'm on? Well, I definitely give Romero the wrestling advantage. Whitaker the striking advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, this fight, what it's gonna come down to, is who's got more cardio? Who's the better <sighs> athlete? Who's gonna stay? Till the end, because this fight's going to go to the bitter end. It's not going to end there. And it's five rounds, too. Oh, it's five rounds? Oh, because it's interim title, interim title, right? Yes, it is. Oh, man. this is gonna. It's going to come down to conditioning. Who do you believe has more conditioning? That's who's going to win this fight. Because clearly, Romero the better wrestler. Clearly, Whitaker the better striker. For sure. That's hands down, for sure, for sure. I don't know if Romero can sub Whitaker, though. You know what I mean? I he tends to... And when it comes to that third round, though, he tends to explode with something lethal and just that finish is people. Crazy. Hey, no, Romero is a freak of nature, man. I don't understand it. But I'll tell you something about Whitaker, too. Whitaker is an amazing athlete, well-rounded, super explosive. Like, the guy could have played rugby professionally. He could have played football professionally. This guy is gifted naturally as well. I think what it's going to come down to is who do you guys think has the better cardio? Okay. Tough call. I can't, I can't pick between the two. Like, to me, it's it's... It's very hard to pick. 
if we're going by facts, I would say according to that metric, according to the Ahmad Zahabi standard, it's Robert Whitaker winning this fight. But um, I'm the only way I see Romero is some. I don't know. This is a good fight. I guess I just have to play both sides of it. But last pick, main event. Amanda Nunes versus Valentina Shevchenko. We have yet. Now, this is what worries me on mine. We have yet to see Nunes fight outside of the first round. And we know what she is outside of the first round. And that's not too good. And I think the reason why is these terrible sinus infections she gets from these plane trips. Who are you picking right here? What do you think about this fight? I think Nunes round one, round one maybe two minutes Let's put this girl away. Hold on. Okay, you. So you're picking Nunes, and you think Early. she's gonna. You you think she's gonna put Shevchenko away? Early. Early. Okay. Early. Early. I know. Look, three. She's got a rich advantage, power advantage, and so much confidence. You know, she's. It looks like she doesn't want to give up the belt. I have a big feeling she's spending a lot of money on training herself and making sure she doesn't lose the belt. She came from nothing. She is not going down easy, and she is motivated, man. Like, she's one of those champions that is it's super motivated and is going to do everything she can to stay on top, and, uh, and she's hungry, man. She's got the belt, but she's starving. All right. that's I got Shevchenko. I don't think Amanda Nunez can fight past this first round, so that's just me. She's not going to need to. No, in this fight, she will, because I don't think she can finish early with her striking. And Shevchenko is a much better grappler than last time. But one last question I should have asked this first. Have you ever played in the DraftKings contest, and how did that go for you? And do you plan on playing in the future? I played once. I lost terribly. I, Yo, I made a 20-person, uh, you know, like a tournament between my friends and I. Uh-huh. And we had like five girls in there. Three of them were the top three. <laughs> <laughs> so not um, only did you lose... You lost a girl. Now, you know the person that runs the DraftKings department is actually a girl. Her name is Christy Sullivan, if I'm not mistaken. Or one I didn't of the- know that. Yeah, she's a black girl in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So it's not such a, uh, a shame to uh, lose <laughs> two girls in DraftKings no, it's not a shame. I just found it funny that I'm a professional fighter and they outpicked me in DraftKings. But you know, there's like, I didn't, you know, it's, it's interesting how DraftKings work. I like it. This, all the strikes count, takedowns. It's amazing. It's amazing. That's awesome. Thanks for your contribution tonight for us. And, uh, in, in it. <laughs> and I am oh shit. <laughs> Once again, I messed up this hobbies, but, uh, thank you very much for your contribution again. Amen. God. Oh man. And, uh, hope to have you back on soon. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Have a good night. And I appreciate being on the show. Welcome to the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast. It's me and CG3 Analytics. You heard I'm on the hobby side of it. Um, now you're going to hear me and CG and the three analytics break this fight card down. Of course, we're presented to you by Ball Club Box. Go check them out over at ballclubbox.com. They are one of the best sports provero provider uh, boxes online. The uh, Pro Wrestling Crate has the Pro Wrestling Box. Um, it's so many boxes out there, but if you want quality sports team apparel, you got favorite teams out there, Ball Club Box is the way to do it. Go to ballclubbox.com. The best deal is the ball club season pass. It's $150 for $375 that five dollars worth of apparel. At least I've estimated that. Um, go check them out, man. Too too sweet of a deal. That's a whole sports season full of apparel for three teams of your choice. Uh, twelve items per month, three teams, and um, it's just it's one of the best deals online. Ballclubbox.com. Go check them out. But now let's go ahead and get into this UFC 13 card. We got to thank Iman Zahabi for his contribution there uh, to kick us off. Beast Mo Cow and Eric F. are missing in action. Eric F. is at the grocery store. Like I said, we got to rescue him from that shit. Uh, I got to get a deal with CBS or somebody so we can get him up out of there. Uh, Beast Mo Cow is MIA. He uh, gave me forewarning. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. But, you know, he's got a professional baseball career that's burgeoning. And, um, yeah, so there you go. Um, yeah, let's get into this fight card. Just me giving you the fight analysis and then CG3 analytics, uh, our, our new addition to the MMA Edge fantasy podcast is going to give you, uh, his, uh, his stats and his stat sheet on things. Um, so let's get into it. First fight is Trevin Giles versus James Bach 
Um, at 205 pounds, Giles is coming in at $9,000. Bochinovich is coming in at $7,200. And for a fight between two debutantes, I think this is a ridiculous pricing. Giles is the more experienced fighter. There's more film on him. He seems to be the more athletic guy. But other than that, I don't see the necessary finishing, high finishing potential in this fight. I think he's the better striker from what I've seen. But I don't necessarily see the knockout. James Bochinovich is the uh, grappler. He's won most of his fights by submission. And Giles gets taken down a lot and put in some bad spots. So I like Bokchimich better as the play here. Uh-oh, wait a minute. At 70, oh, yeah, at $7,200. And um, I expect that uh, – I, I don't know if I'll have any Giles because I well, from what I watched in the film, I just did not like his finishing upside. CG3 analytics, what's your, uh, what's your, what's your stats on this fight, man? Yeah, no, I completely agree. I don't understand the disparity in DraftKings. Uh, Bakhnovich finished all of his fights, uh, 13% by knockout. I'm sorry, 12% by knockout, 88% by submission. Uh, I wasn't impressed with Giles at all. I thought he seemed to gas in the later rounds. I wasn't too impressed with his striking. I know Bakhnovich trains with um, uh, Ben Rothwell. Uh, he's got very slick submissions, and I like Bakhnovich and GPPs and cash. Yeah, I like Botchmiss in GPPs and cash as well. I like him both. Uh, there's a couple. I think there's like a couple other guys. Well, well, not necessarily cash, but definitely GPPs. Because there's some guys I'm really heavy on uh, at the bottom of this. But let's go on to the next fight here. It's Terion Ware versus Cody Stamen at 145 pounds. Uh, Terion Ware is coming in here at $7,100. Cody Stamen, $9,100. Cody Stamen looked absolutely, uh, he, he's very well-rounded. He's got wrestling. He's got boxing. He can win this fight in, in any different way you can think of. Terry on Ware is mainly a boxer, and that's about it. I don't like Ware too much at all um, in this situation. Uh, he doesn't offer much. If he doesn't get the knockout, he won't be on a winning lineup, maybe even in a case of a win, which I don't think he has the tools to win this fight. Just too one-dimensional um, and not very athletic either. But these are two debuting fighters, too, so who knows? And it's kind of a short-notice fight, like on, what, 10 days' notice or something like that? So uh, I think that might be the case with the boxing versus Giles fight well as well. So these are this is another short-notice fight. The UFC is doing a lot of those these days. CG3 Analytics, what's your stats on this fight? Yeah, I agree with you. I like Stamen more. Uh, I know he has a uh, <clears throat> wrestling background, but he is also a Golden Gloves boxer as well. So, uh, you know, we obviously not a whole lot of film on these guys, but I like Stamen and Cash. I don't want to touch them in GPPs until I see some more of them. Okay. All right. I, I would think it would be the reverse where you would say GPPs but not Cash. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I just don't. I want to see his knockout and submission upside first. See if he can okay. fight at this level. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, uh, third fight up is going to be Rob Fight versus Douglas Andrade, Douglas De Silva Andrade. And uh, Ahmad Zahabi, our expert fighter, picked Font over Andrade. Really liked what he saw from him in his last fight. I'm picking Font over Andrade, but I don't like his finishing potential as Douglas Andrade has only ever lost one fight here at 135. And I think the pricing is way off. Rob Font is $9,200. Douglas De Silva Andrade is $7,000. Um, he is absolutely... Uh, I think that's way too much of a, a difference for a fight that should be so close. The only loss in Andrade's career has been to Zabera Tukugov in the decision. Uh, uh, he won over Cody Gibson, won over Enrique Briones. He finished him. He did what Cody Garbrandt could not do which is super impressive. I like De Silva and Drodge better as the play here uh, at his price. Um, Rob Fine is an excellent GPP play, but I don't like his finishing potential against an opponent of this high uh, caliber. CG3 Analytics, what do you think? Yeah, I like Rob Font a lot. I just don't like his price tag. He averages 4.29 strikes per minute, fights at a very high pace, and this guy has speed and power. I believe his only UFC loss is to John Lineker as well. So I like Font. I will have him in GPPs. Um, I won't have any of uh, Dan Drod. 
Okay, that's understandable. I, I can understand that. Um, I like Andrade. I don't like Font too much. I like other stuff at the top here. So that's why I say that. Next fight up though, 170 pounds. Jordan Mean versus Bilal Muhammad. Remember the name, Muhammad. $8,100 even. You know my rule. If it's priced even, play it even. Um, I like Jordan Mean better. Muhammad is super chinny. He's been hurt in like every single fight except for the, well, except for the fights he just controlled it with his wrestling. And that's pretty much the tale of this tape. If this stays a striking match, Bilal Muhammad will probably be finished. He's way too hurtable. And Jordan Mean, although he didn't look very, he looked good in the first round of his last fight. I think he won it. Uh, he, it had been two years since he had fought and he kind of gassed out. Bilal Muhammad, if he can't, it seems as though when he faces higher level opponents like Mean, if he can't finish you, I mean, if he can't re out wrestle you, he's going to lose the war of attrition. And that's what this should be. Muhammad has excellent uh, wrestling upside, but I like Mean should win this fight if he's the same old Jordan Mean. I don't know if he is, um, but I love Mean and GPPs more than Muhammad. But like I said, it's priced even. Go ahead and play it even because it's a super valuable fight in that price range. CG3 Analytics, what did your analytics think of this fight? See, I like Muhammad better in both formats. I like Muhammad in cash and GPPs. Muhammad fights at a higher pace. He has 4.76 land, uh, 4.76 strikes landed per minute. Uh, I just think Mean's very overrated. Uh, I mean, you look at his last couple fights, he lost his last two fights. The last win he has is over Mike Pyle. So I think if Muhammad keeps the distance, keeps the, you know, starts with the leg kicks, works the body, I think Muhammad can finish Mean. I don't like Mean in any formats. Really? That's yeah. Mean hurts. I think he's very, I think he's very overrated. I mean, he, he hurts almost every single opponent. I don't think he's overrated at all. Fought Matt Brown. He had them on the brink of death. He beat the piss out of Tiago Alves. I mean, this is a serious dude here. But... This is your opinion. Like I said, it's price even, so in GPPs, I play it even, and I'm the reverse. I like mean and cash better than I do Muhammad. I can't, I like him that much because, like I said, Muhammad always, always, always gets hurt. So um, that being said, on to the next fight. Tiago Santos at 185 pounds versus Gerald Mirskart. I think this is Tiago Santos' fight to lose. Uh, Tiago Santos is coming in at... $8,500. Mirskar is coming in at um, $7,700. Um, Tiago Santos is going to be... Do, do, do. He, he, he was... Uh, that um, Iman Zahabi picked Tiago Santos over Mirskar. Uh, I forgot to... I, since we do it at the beginning of the show, I, sometimes I forget. But he also picked... Uh, was it Mean over... No, he picked Muhammad over Mean, too. So, he's with you, CG3 Analytics. But, yeah, he picked Santos over Mirskar. I think this is one of my surest picks of the night. Gerald Mirskar is great where he can get to the fight to the ground. But, Tiago Santos is big, strong, and he's got a pretty solid Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu game. And that Eric Silva, uh, Eric Spicely fight, he hurt himself. So, that's why he was, uh, he was submitted, I think, more than anything else. Um, I, I love... Tiago Santos, I think he's going to beat up on um, Mirskart really bad because Mirskart is neither Musasi nor Spicely. He's not that high level of a grappler. CG3 Analytics, what are your analytics telling us about this fight? See, I kind of like uh, Mirskart in the uh, in the upset. Uh, Mirskart finished 73% of his fights by submission. Uh, meanwhile, Santos lost 40% of his fights by submission. Uh, you know, I always go back to that Spicely fight. I mean, you say he was injured. I, I wasn't aware of that. But, I mean, it seemed like when Spicely sunk in that rear naked choke, he didn't even try to defend it at all. He's like a deer in headlights. So he was also submitted by uh, Cesar Ferreira in the first round as well. I, I like Nearshart by submission. I like him in cash and GPP. I don't think – I'll have a little exposure to Santos and GPP just for the knockout, uh, knockout upside. Oh, Okay. Um, very interesting. All right. Uh, yeah, he hurt his knee, and I think that's why he looked so terrible in that fight. Um, uh, that's why he got taken down like he did, too. Chandler Priest versus Brian Camozzi at 170 pounds. In this fight, Iman Zahabi, our expert fighter, picked Chad Priest, who used to train up at TriStar. 
Uh, he's gone up in weight to 170 pounds from 155 pounds. That weight cut was really sucking the life out of him. I think Laprise is the better fighter everywhere. Brian Camozzi and terrible. But Laprise, especially if he goes to the grappling, the Camozzi brothers are allergic to grappling. Uh, Camozzi could very well be uh, finished uh, here. So I really like Laprise. He's a top cash game play of mine. Maybe the top cash game play. And uh, he's a top GPP play of mine. Uh, no Camozzi for me anywhere. CG3 Analytics, what do you think? Yeah, I completely agree with you. I like Laprise and Cash. Um, fights at a very high pace, 4.5 strikes landed per minute. The only thing Camozzi has going for him is his reach. He has a 78-inch reach against Laprise's 71-inch reach. But um, I can't imagine Camozzi knocking him out or even threatening him at all. So I like Laprise and Cash. Okay, and Laprise is $9,300 to, to, to $7,100. But I still, Price, I love Laprise. He's one of my, my best bets on the card. Um, we've got Travis Brown versus Alexi Olenek at heavyweight. And this is absolutely a fight I think Travis Brown should win. He's coming in here at $8,600, while Olenek is $7,600. But maybe the curse of Edmund Tarverdian is still alive. Travis Brown, if he's going to lose to anybody, is going to be people that can knock him out. Submission artists have never had too much luck with him. He elbowed Josh Barnett into hell. He elbowed Gabriel Gonzaga into hell. Olenek is not a better striker than him. He's not quicker than him. He's not more athletic. And Olenek's going to need to get this to the ground to win. And Brown's been tra uh, training with Josh Barnett. Travis Brown should win this and probably should win it in pretty brutal fashion. His his uh, takedown defense is pretty impeccable with his huge frame at 6'7". But he trains at Edmund Tarverdian's camp. And Edmund Tarverdian's camp is like 0-6 in their last six fights. So <laughs> I've got to have my Olenek exposure. I think Brown should win, but he hasn't been. And why he had a technical advantage over Derek Lewis and lost that. So why not here? He's got a huge height and reach advantage in this fight, but uh, CG3 analytic, uh, I, I like, I don't know if I like Olenek or Brown in cash. I like both these guys in GPPs, but CG3 analytics, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I agree with you. I like both of these fighters in uh, GPP, won't have any cash exposure. So Olenek uh, finished 80% of his fights by submission, but like you mentioned, Travis Brown has excellent takedown defense at 83%. So Olenek's only path to victory is knockout, which he's not much of a striker at 1.61 strikes landed per minute. But with that being said, Brown has been very chinny as of late, and I don't trust him. So I will have a little bit of exposure to each, but um, I think Brown should win. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, uh, I'm on Zabi pretty much agree with me that Travis Brown was in terrible shape. It looks like his head's not in it, and if your head's not in it, you is in troubles. Uh, Anthony Pettis versus Jim Miller at 155 pounds. Uh, Anthony Pettis is coming in here at $8,900. Jim Miller at $7,300. I absolutely love Jim Miller. Uh, he is a grappler, and Anthony Pettis always loses to guys that can put pressure on him, take him down, and smother him. And that's what Jim Miller does. Um, I love Jim Miller at $7,300. Like him in cash. Love him in GPPs. I'm, I'm going to have some Anthony Pettis, too. Because Anthony could TK on. But this is what Anthony Pettis has been losing to lately. CG3 analytics. Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Amon Zahabi, our expert fighter, picked Jim Miller as well. CG3 analytics is at 3 for 3. What do you think? Yeah, I think I'm going to fade this fight. I don't know where to go. They both fight at a very low output. Pettis, 2.62 strikes per minute. Miller's 2.75. I think, uh, you know, as you mentioned, Miller could take him down and control him. That's why I like him in cash. Pettis could always catch Miller with a head kick, just like Cerrone did. So, yeah, Pettis and GPPs, Miller and cash. Okay. Um, I, I like Miller in both formats. Um, why only Miller and cash for you? Why not GPPs? <sighs> There's other people at that price range that I like better, honestly. I like Bachnevik. Uh, I like Mearshark. I just I don't see the need to uh, save the money with uh, Miller. I, I think even if he wins, he's only going to put up 65 points. And 
I don't know. I think there's guys that are around that price range with better finishing value. Okay. All right. I understand there. Um, we've got um, our next fight up here is going to be Fabricio Verdum at 265 pounds versus Alistair Overeem, our expert fighter. I mind hobby and trainer. Pick Fabricio Verdum all day long. Fabricio Verdum is going to be coming in here at $7,800 to Alistair Overeem's $8,400. And Alistair Overeem's $8,400. Um, I like Fabricio Verdum a whole bunch. I just want to lock him in everywhere. I will have my Overeem hedges. But Alistair Overeem is absolutely chinny. He's running away from people. And Fabricio Verdum is a lot like Steve Pimaochis, except I think more technical, even though he got knocked out by him. He's a pressure fighter. He's he's got he's that got that Kings MMA style. He's a great grappler. I know that um, Fabricio Verdun lost the second fight, but he's a much different fighter now. He's a much better striker, and I think that's going to be the difference here. Is that overall in his chin is garbage. Fabricio Verdun is a better striker, and the pressure should melt over him. I think, well, especially with his uh, uh, flight style these days. CG3 Analytics. What's the numbers telling us? Yeah, my preferred play is Verdum. Uh, Overeem lost 67% of his fights by knockout. As you mentioned, he's super chinny. Uh, Verdum striking has improved. With that being said, I like Verdum in cash and GPP. I will have a little bit of exposure to Overeem because he does have that power. You know, he put away uh, Dos Santos. He put away Mark Hunt. But, um, yeah, preferred play is definitely Verdum, especially for the cost savings. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. So we both love our doom. I love him in cash. I love him in GPPs. I could end up regretting him, but Overeem is just shot as far as his chin goes. So Curtis Blades versus Daniel Omilanchuk, 265 pounds. Um, I uh, Cur Curtis Blades is coming in here at $9,500. Omilanchuk, $6,700. And Amon Zahabi had no idea who either of these guys were. Um... Curtis Blaze is absolutely a GPP monster. Uh, he put up a hundred and twenty-six points in his uh, his Milstead fight, a hundred and thirty points in the East fight, and people should be all over him because he has, if I'm not mistaken, the highest fantasy points per game on this card. Well, no, he doesn't. Mirskar has the highest. Blades has the second highest. Nunez has the Third highest font has a high one. Alexi Olenek is up there. So that's going to be your highest ownerships right there. Um, Blaze is going to be over-owned in my mind for what this fight provides. I think he has the ability to win. But Omi Alanchuk is the better striker. And he's never been one to get finished. He got finished in there against Stefan Struve because of how big Struve was. But Omi Alanchuk is not the kind of guy that you knock out. He's not the kind of guy you submit. So I see a lot of takedowns possibly from Curtis Blaze and control and ground and pound, but I don't necessarily see the big finish and the, the continuous uh, takedowns and the big points. Curtis Blaze is worth the exposure, but the field is going to have exposure at around 45 to 50%. I want to be lower than that. CG3 Analytics, what do you think? Yeah, so I always hate uh, paying up for the most expensive guy on the card, but I have to with Blades. I mean, the numbers point to victory. Uh, 4.39 strikes landed per minute, 68% uh, takedown accuracy. Meanwhile, Omi Alanchak has 53% takedown defense. Uh, yeah, I love Curtis Blaze in, in all formats. My only fear is that he might actually finish this fight too early. You know, against Milstead, he took Milstead down eight times. Milstead kept on getting back to his feet. Blaze would put him back down. So uh, I like him in all formats. I think he's a no-brainer. Okay, yeah, I'm just saying, lower your ownership. I wouldn't have ownership over ten to twenty percent of blades. I would want to. I want to be lower than way lower than fifty percent. And of course, when you have a fighter that's super high owned, forty five to fifty percent is always a good thing to maybe play a little bit of his opponent because you get to burn fifty percent of the field just like that. Boom. So. Uh, I love uh, maybe a little Omi Lanchuk as a little contrarian play, even though I don't think he has a prayer. Um, do, do, do. Oh, co-main event of the evening. We have your Romero versus Robert Whitaker. Amon's hobby said, pick who you think has the better cardio. That's Robert Whitaker, according to the Amon's hobby standard. But uh, let's get into the prices here. $7,900 for your Romero, $8,300 for Robert Whitaker. 
my pick is Joe Romero. I love him. He seems to always win in the third round. Jesus is going to be with him. Um, Soldier God, man, third round TKO seemed to be at underdog price, seemed to be where it's at for him. The numbers tell me why Robert Whitaker, but my heart and, and, and my gut tell me uh, Yo Romero. Chris Wyman was overplayed versus Yo Romero. Um, I think he should have exposure to both sides. For me, I love Yo Romero in cash and GPPs. No, not too much Robert Whitaker for me. I'm going with Leo Romero in the third. That's how it's been, man. He's the soldier god. He's Destiny's child. Um, CG3 Analytics, I bet you I know what the analytics tell me. But what yeah. do they say? The analytics are leaning towards Whitaker, but I keep on going back and forth on this fight. I mean, looking at the numbers, Whitaker's super high output, 5.18 strikes landed per minute. And not only that, he has 91% takedown defense. So if the fight's going to be on its feet, <clears throat> I think uh, I think I have to go with Whitaker. The uh, thing that scares me is Romero is super explosive. When he hit Weidman with that flying knee, I mean, he could very well do that again to Whitaker. So I like Whitaker in cash and GPP. I like Romero uh, mainly, in G mainly in GPP just because I think he can come out of nowhere with the knockout. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, it should be an awesome fight. Super hard to call, but like I said, Yo Romero, he's never when he, he's never the favorite, always the underdog. And I'm just I know he didn't have the highest GPP upside because his low output and everything like that. But I'm loving Yo Romero uh, in all formats. Main event of the evening: Amanda Nunez versus Valentina Shevchenko. Amanda Nunez, eighty thousand dollars. Valentina Shevchenko. $8,200. Shevchenko, uh, well, before I get into the fight, I'm on a hobby pick, Nunez over Shevchenko. Too hungry, too powerful, uh, too motivated. So saith he. But what does LaRoz Stephan say? He says Shevchenko all day. She's a better grappler than she was in the first fight. She, she's the better striker out of the two. Uh, higher output. Um, and we all know what Amanda Nunez is past the first one and a half rounds. Boo boo. That's what she is. Um, Amanda Nunez is absolutely spectacular in the first round, but it's going to, she's not going to be, a, uh, the only thing, her only prayer to end it in the first round is to get it to the ground and just beat the piss out of Shevchenko. But Shevchenko's improved there. She submitted Juliana Pena, who is as strong or stronger as a wrestler. So um, I like Shevchenko. Amanda Nunez is worth the exposure. A little bit, but I, I just think this goes more than two rounds, and that means Amanda Nunez is going to be dead. So I'm going to count this as free points. Amanda Nunez passed the first round is garbage because of those sinus infections uh, that she gets. I think that's the main reason. It's not that she's not working hard. She travels, she gets a sinus infection, and she's oftentimes in that dry um, um Vegas desert heat and that's it's not a good place for uh, sinus infection sicknesses and things like that It's hard even on a healthy person Conor McGregor struggled there um, I'm on Zahabi. I mean <laughs> CG3 analytics. What's the analytics saying? So the analytics are pointing towards uh, Nunez 71% KO percentage uh, <clears throat> Land uh, strikes landed per minute is 4.69 Shevchenko's 2.48 but, um, so yeah, the numbers are pointing, uh, pointing towards Nunez, but like you said, I like Shevchenko. Uh, the longer the fight goes, it favors Shevchenko. And um, I think if she gets it to the ground, she can beat Nunez up just like Kat Zingano did. So my preferred play is uh, Shevchenko and cash in GPPs, but I will have exposure to Nunez in GPPs because she can punch. Uh, you know, knocked out Misha Tate, knocked out Ronda Rousey. Sarah McMahon, I mean, she can, she's got some power. Yes, she does. But all those girls that you mentioned have pretty telling striking deficiencies and are, are from a different generation of the women's division. Shevchenko is the future. Uh, absolutely a great striker, a very good black belt in judo. Uh, and uh, I think she has the ability to survive whatever storm will be presented to her for one and a half rounds and go ahead and finish Nunez off late. That's going to wrap it up for the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast this week, guys. Um, UFC 213. Hopefully, black market picks. We're going to do that tonight, me and Travis. But if we don't, 
that would be the first time in a long time. I don't think that's ever happened. I don't think we've missed one yet. But I got to thank CG3 Analytics. He's a great addition to the MMA as fantasy podcast. We're going to have, uh, got to thank Amon Zahabi for his contribution. And then we're going to have Eric F. and Beast Mocal back in the future. So that's awesome, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I am out. Peace out, guys.